Yeah, now what to do? Got this guy. He's just beautiful. Look at him. This is the first snake I've ever managed to get hold of in Europe. Normally they're super feisty and can't get anywhere close to them. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode. I know it's been a it's been a while since I've updated you all. It's been a busy, busy period these last few weeks. Obviously, I had a had a big block of training, went up to altitude up at Isola 2000, where we got a lot of uh, a lot of work in, uh, a lot of the the preparation work for the Tour de France there. Went into the Mercan Classic, which is a, a new addition to our calendar and <laughs> not really an event I'd, uh, I'd, I'd typically go for, one day race, but ended up with the win with Jakob and Woodsy coming second. So a great day for the team. For me personally, I felt pretty happy with how that went as well. Uh, it was the first, first time, I think, since my big crash three years ago that I've actually been in in, this, in, in the pointy end of the peloton when it comes to when, when we get up into the mountains. We got down to about, I don't know what it was, 15 guys left on the climb and I found myself uh, still still in that group. So definitely good signs ahead of, ahead of all the racing that's coming up now. It's been the first time for me really that I've had since January just uninterrupted work. I've, I've, I've been able to do my training. I've done a few blocks of racing here and there. But it's the first time, I think, since that big crash three years ago that I haven't had niggles or pains or anything sort of holding me back. I, I haven't had to put a huge focus on the off-bike work. I've, I've purely just been focusing on my training, my nutrition, um, and I'm feeling like it's, it's really made a difference. I've, I finally managed to get down to uh, my race weight. Uh, it's been a, been a bit of a push these last few weeks, but, um, but I've, I've got there, so feeling, feeling good in myself. <laughs> into the the Dauphiné after the Mercan Classic. Dauphiné I felt went well first few days uh, legs were feeling good. I woke up one morning had a bit of a bit of a sore throat and felt that going down into my chest the uh, 24 hours later so unfortunately I had to pull the plug on Dauphiné but rested up for two days and, and that cleared completely and um, straight back into training again so I don't think that's really affected my my build up to the tour even though I would have really wanted to get those those race days in in Dauphiné but having said that I I'm feeling good I'm feeling good I'm, I'm feeling ready for the month ahead obviously getting ready for a grand tour you, you you're always questioning am I ready have I done have I done enough have I done too much <laughs> I went out uh, set out for training today uh, I was going to do the last block of intervals but we're in into the last few days into the build up to the Tour de France now actually training now isn't really gonna there's nothing you can really do now that's gonna improve your fitness or improve your form ahead of the Tour de France but what you could do now which is what a lot of people a mistake a lot of riders make is not allow themselves to freshen up enough before a Grand Tour I mean a Grand Tour is brutal you've got three weeks of extremely hard racing so I today when I went out I went out started the intervals and the legs felt fine but I could just feel I've, I've got a bit of a, a, a deeper fatigue. I've done, the, the last couple of weeks, I've done over 30 hours a week of, of training, and I just got that feeling it's, it's time to back off a little bit today. So pull the plug, I'm gonna freshen up a little bit now. Everything's heading in the right direction. Um, I'm looking forward to the month ahead. I think the tour's got, we've got an extremely tricky first week, 
starting over in Denmark. I think uh, a lot of road furniture, a lot of stress on those flatter stages. Kicking things off with, with, a, with a time trial on stage one, I think it's 12, 12.8 kilometers or something like that. So that would be a bit of a bit of a leg opener, and then straight into the races, the, the flatter stages, poten the potential of crosswinds uh, over some uh, nice big uh, ten-kilometer bridges over there as well could could make things really interesting. And then obviously in the first week of, of the tour, uh, we've got the cobble stage, very similar to to Paris Roubaix, but a uh, little little less brutal, but. It's always chaos when you've got when you've got a cobble day in, in a Grand Tour, especially the Tour de France in the first week. It's going to be carnage. There's no, there's no there's no nice way to put that. I mean, it's just going to be brutal fighting, fighting for position. It'd be really interesting to see where all the GC guys are on that day. Who's actually got racing for the stage win? Who's racing for GC? Some people are going to get caught out there. It it happens every time. Stage seven, we head up into the mountains. Quite a cool little trip down memory lane for me with Planche de Belfi. It was actually where I won my very first Tour de France stage back in 2012. That'll be exciting. Be, be back racing there exactly 10 years after I, I, I won back in 2012. We've got a very tough second week of the Tour de France. I, I think that's where a lot of the GC will be decided. Got some, some brutal mountain stages coming up there. This year is also quite special for me in the, in the sense that it's my 10th Tour de France. And, and that's, that's pretty special to think. I've got a decade of Tour de France's that I will have, will have ridden. I, I kind of have to pinch myself when I hear that and, and think, oh, that's a lot of racing. That's a lot of time, time on the road. That's a lot of preparation, a lot of, a lot of seasons where that's been my main focus. It's special going into this year. Being where I am now, having come back from, from that nasty injury uh, three years ago, I feel so lucky. I feel so lucky to be uh, going to the Tour de France and to be in, in this sort of physical shape that I'm in, that I'm fully recovered from the crash and get, getting back into the racing now. Today, I've got a bit of a, a, bit of a test training, just a 20 minute full gas effort. I use the, the Col de la Madone. Feel good today, feel, uh, feel white. Um, let's see, let's see what happens. I could, could explode. Uh, this light feeling goes one, one or two ways. Either I'm gonna be feeling great up the climb or five, 10 minutes in, I'm just gonna explode. So let's see, let's see what's in the legs today. Yeah, definitely pretty full gas. I uh, was running out of legs in the last few minutes there, especially on those uh, flatter sections. It's just like, oh, trying to change down the gear and pick up the cadence again. But um, yeah, pretty happy with that. I mean, if I can trust these numbers, I guess, within uh, 10, 15 watts of where I've, where I've been previously. What was interesting this time is I got further in comparison to to other tests I've done, which means I'm, I'm moving faster, moving faster uphill. So I think that's that's uh, evidence to to show that losing losing weight and doing hill climbs is uh, go hand in hand. So that's the only way to get ready for the races, really. Look at this guy. That is just beautiful. Look at him. That's probably about a meter long meter and a half no idea what kind of snake that is look at him just sunbathing getting warm I wonder if I can catch him a few moments later yeah now what to do got this guy he's just beautiful Look at him. This is the first snake I've ever managed to get hold of in Europe. Normally they're super feisty and can't get anywhere close to them. No idea what he is, but he is stunning. Come on, in the bottle. 
in the bottle. One eternity later. Managed to catch him, wrap him up in, in an undershirt. Both my kids, having, having grown up in Europe, don't really know much about snakes or how to handle them or how they are as a species, how they're misunderstood, I guess. Bit of an, bit of an education lesson coming here when, when I get home, teach them a little bit about, about snakes, not to be so scared of them, uh, what they eat and how they live, and then, then we'll let him go again. We'll find a nice place in the mountains and uh, set him free again. This year we're going to be racing in special kit that's been made to raise awareness for the Racing for Change project over in Rwanda where we're raising funds to build a, a special cycling hub called the, the Field of Dreams. If you want to check out more information, how to get involved, how to donate, I'll, I'll post it in the description below. I've got to run, I've got to go finish packing. I'll, I'll try and keep you updated the best I can while I'm over there. But uh, don't forget to, to give me a big like if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe for any future content I put out there. Take care guys and stay safe on the roads.